if the game is condos, what are you doing it for? For rental income or for the ability to sell it later on? Ano yung mas magandang style or uh, what's your style? Kasi not all properties are for rental income. Not okay. all properties are for flipping. So it actually depends kung which property yung ini-invest ka. So some I keep it long term. Some I, I just keep it between 12 months to 24 months. Max na yun. Mm. Um, usually I... There's a timing component in real estate. Eh? Mm. So when are you gonna exit in mm. real estate? That's mm. one of the most important e exit strategies. Mm. So usually my strategy is I exit before everyone else exits mm. to avoid price war. Mm. So most of my properties are for flipping but not short term flipping. Okay. So uh, how do you ano, how do you determine ano yung pang at more long term ano yung pang 12 to 24 months lang na ano is there a parameter na parang eto yung mga rule of thumbs na etong condo na to pang short term lang to tapos second question while you're thinking about also what to share uh, habang hinihintay mo na 12 to 24 months kung turnover siya do you have it rented out or nakaiwan lang siya na bakante top of your mind sino yung madalas na madalas na pag naglabas sila madalas silang sold out para people can narrow down the list na pwede nilang puntahan agad ano yung fastest flip na nagawa mo ever since Fastest flip was, I think it was around one month lang. Hi everyone, please subscribe to Marvin Germos YouTube channel and click that bell right now. Yes, please click it, please click it guys, so enjoy the video. Hi everyone, we're in for a treat. We have Richard Carvajal, the CEO of Philgems Realty Incorporated. Correct? Hello, yes. Tama, 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 uh, tama. tama. Okay, tama. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of real estate uh, specific questions already. I'm gonna grill you with a lot of real estate items. Okay, lang. Ah, sige, okay I'm lang. ready for it. Okay. Sige, try natin. Okay, as, as you all know, also Richard uh, is a millennial millionaire. How old are you now? I'm 29. I 29. just 29. Okay, okay. Pero at least, ano, younger guys. It's nice to see a lot of people. Para sa akin, it's nice to see a lot of people who are younger, who are very, very successful, who are doing uh, very, very well. Eh. Kasi, ayun eh, it's, I want to see parang the next generation of Filipinos do better. Kasi yun yung kailangan natin, no one does yes, entrepreneurship, exactly. no one does investing as as much. So, ano lang, very, very quick update before we go to real estate. Uh, Ano na tayo ngayon? Where, where are you investing now? Ano yung mga newest investments mo? The last video we had was more than two years ago na eh. So, update lang on your life as well. Go! Ah, uh, okay. So, two years uh, has passed. So, sobrang dami nangyari. Okay. Ang bilis lang ng panahon. So, still, I continue to invest real estates mm. while nabenta ko na yung ibang property ko. I still buy new properties as well. And of course, uh, my biggest investment the last two years was education. Talaga? So, I actually spent... Um, more than a million in Ooh. education so that, that that's it for the last two years so currently I'm still finishing my master's in real estate investment finance mm. so then I just finished the first part of the course in Oxford so mm. balik -balik. that's why it it costs millions Galing. yeah so uh, over the past two years nag enhance ka ng skill mo kahit, kahit, that's why guys the rich get richer because uh, they don't just focus on entertainment, they focus on education. Kahit madami ng alam, I'm sure Richard knows more about real estate than 90% of the population, pero he's still uh, equipping himself to know more. So the past two years, did you buy, how many, ano binin mo, condo, land, houses, uh, more on, buildings? More on condominiums. Okay. okay. So aside from investing in my business, of course, running the company, for my personal investment, usually condominiums talaga. Okay. Ako. Kasi that's for me, that's the easiest one to handle. Okay. <laughs> Ngayon, et, here's my question. Uh, if, if the game is condos, what are you doing it for? For rental income or for the ability to sell it later on? Ano yung mas magandang style or ah. what's your style? Okay. It actually depends on which property. Mm. Kasi not all properties are for rental income. Not okay. all properties are for flipping. So it actually depends kung which property yung ini-invest ka. So some I keep it long term. Some I, I just keep it between 12 months to 24 months. Max na yun. Mm. Um, usually I... There's a timing component in real estate. Eh? So when are you gonna exit in real estate? That's one of the most important e exit strategies. So usually my strategy is I exit before everyone else exits to avoid price war. So most of my properties are for 
flipping but not short term flipping. Okay. So uh, how do you ano how do you determine ano yung pang at uh, more long term ano yung pang 12 to 24 months lang na ano is there a parameter na parang eto yung mga rule of thumbs na etong condo na to pang short term lang to. Tapos second question while you're thinking about also what to share. Uh habang hinihintay mo na 12 to 24 months, kung turnover siya, do you have it rented out or nakaiwan lang siya na bakante? Ah, okay. So the first question was the first question was how do I know? Oh, determine what yeah, how what, do I determine? Ano mga parameters mo to know if it's parang for long term or for short term? Tapos ano yung mga tinitingnan mo para malaman na short, pang short term lang to? Well, it's actually the market reaction to it, uh, how the market uh, reacts to it to a certain uh, launch of the developer. So usually, pag masaya na, there's a certain price point na tina-target ko. So for example, I acquired the property at around 5 million pesos. When it reaches 7.5 million, I usually exit already because I'm happy na with that kind of percentage. But usually, um. Um, in selecting the properties na hinahanap mo, kailangan, uh, of course, number one is dapat uh, usually may track record siya na usually sold out dapat siya. Kasi it's hard to flip a property na hindi pa sold out sa developer. Okay. Or else you're just gonna battle with prices sa developer. Okay. So, so most of the property, pag may exit ako, usually I sell it a little lower than the current price ng developer. Kasi at the end of the day, developer's price is a speculative price. Mm. So for example, um, sinabi la, ah, okay, nag-price increase na yung property namin ng uh, 9 million pesos. But would people really buy it at 9 million pesos? So sometimes I sell my property at 7.5 million while developer's price is 9 million, something mm. like that. Kasi, mm. kasi kumita ka na ng, ano, no? kumita yes. ka na ng so certain you, amount. The thing here is okay. you can never be greedy in real uh, estate. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, uh, you, you said about may mga, may mga developers na nasusold out kagad. Uh, top of your mind, sino yung madalas na, madalas na, pag naglabas sila, madalas silang sold out para people can narrow down the list na pwede nilang puntahan agad. Sige, uh, number one would always be DMCI. Oh, it's talaga? actually oh. the easiest one. <laughs> May, mahirap pumila actually during launching. But it's the easiest one that gets sold out. Well, it's, um, it's more of tailored to the middle class market which is the bigger sa population natin dito sa Philippines. That's why it caters so much for them. The size, the cuts, the sizes are for family, etc. So, and we have housing backlog, no? Dito sa Philippines. So, it actually answers the housing backlog. Even their payment terms are very friendly for Filipinos and regular Filipino families. So it's not a high-end market. So um, that one uh, sells like pancakes, okay. of course. Um, Ayala Properties, of course. Um, mabilis na mabilis din siya. Usually, uh, wala pang launch, there's LOI, etc. Um, there are uh, other more developers. There are, there are developers na sobrang bilis din. Like for example, SMPC, um, it sells fast then, but it's hard to flip that property. So, yeah, so hindi naman lahat ng, ano, uh, hindi naman lahat ng pro property market mabilis siya ma-sell ma or ma-sold out. It means, madali lang di siya ma-flip. Okay. Ano yung uh, mga, ano, ano yung, ano yung fastest flip na nagawa mo ever since? Fastest flip was, I think, it was around one month lang. Oh, talaga? So, oh. uh, so ganito yung nangyari. Ha? Medyo mahaba yung story. Okay. Sige story. Na, okay lang. So, we will title this how Richard Carvajal flip a property in one month. Diba? Okay, so ganito. Okay, okay, so, detect ka muna ng property. So, so um, someone came to me, inoffer na ako ng property. Sabi niya, um, during that time, sabi ko, um, uh, he was paying the property for 10 months only. So, it means 10 months ago lang na launch yung property okay. something like that so at that time he got the property at 2.3 million pesos pre selling no ah uh, pre selling yes okay. hindi pa siya to turn over and then um uh, the current value of the property was around 3.2 million or 3.3 million pesos so because I'll buy your property without any kasi kailangan niya ng money so because I'll buy your property without any um interest or any ano just to just for you to get back the money i'll pay all the taxes the charges na ano so um i, I bought the property so ang, during that time ang nababayaran niya palang 12 months times uh 12,000 per month uh, sorry 10 months times 12,000 per month palang yun nababayaran niya so that's around 120,000 pesos okay. so yun lang yun nilabas kong cash okay. so i bought the property at that price of course and then um 
na hold ko pa yung property for a while. Sakto, the same month na binili ko yung property, nag-increase yung price list niya from the developer to 4.5 million, I think. Kasi nga, because of the um, Ortigas BGC link mm. na ginagawa. So, banda dun yun eh. Malapit yun, the, the, the Santa okay. Monica Bridge. Okay. So, uh, Ortiga side, BGC side? Ortiga side. Okay, okay. So, um, that property now, uh, binenta ko siya. So, I, I, I sold that property. Sabi ko dun sa Pilagbatao, you know, the property is sold out with the developer. It's currently 4 million plus. I'm only selling it to you at 3 million 200,000 pesos, if I can remember correctly. So, in short, uh, binayaran niya yung difference okay. from what I paid for. Tapos, tinuli niya yung property. So, that was the flip, uh, the fastest flip na nagawa ko. So, in that flip, I earned million, uh, more than a million peso. And then, um, ang nilabas ko lang pera is 120,000 pesos. <laughs> so, that's the key to leverage. That, that's why also, it, uh, money is just an idea. If you know how to uh, use that idea well, uh, money will also flow. No? I have a question. Hindi naisip nung nagbenta sa'yo na Ito yung market price ngayon, bakit ko bibenta at the, the amount that I place? Okay. The, yung nagbenta sa akin, 3 months na siyang hindi nakakabayad ng property. Ah. I think nagkasakit yung parents niya or something like that. Okay. So, uh, ako naman, binili ko yung property. Pero, um, hindi ko ina-advise na kasi syempre we have to um, give the benefit din sa mga nag-invest, okay. of course. Okay. Uh, eh, kaya lang ito, wala talaga akong plan bilhin yung property pero lumapit siya sa akin. So, I took the risk of buying the property. Okay, pero do we, may ganun ba? May website ba doon? May portal ba na? O, oh, eto yung mga nagbibenta ng nagmamadali na they just want to dispose. Ito, Ay, hindi, wala. Pero sa, you have to, you ano, have connections so siguro, that's why you Actually, can. I wasn't the agent. There was an agent. There was okay. a broker who sold me that. So, may broker siya. So, I think you have to talk to your brokers and agents lagi. So, you have to ask them because they have the network. Eh. Okay. Usually, yung um, sila, pag hindi na mabayaran ng client nila yung property, uh, tinutulungan rin nila i-resale. So, ask lang kayo ng bargain price or lower than the market value price for them. Okay, galing. Uh, so, 120,000 naging how much? Uh, 1 million. 1 last million in <laughs> one month. That's cash. Ha? That's wow, cash. galing. Pero, uh, I have another question. How does that work? Yung pagka-transfer, how does the paperwork uh, for, work for that? Kasi hindi pa naman na-transfer talaga yung title sa pangalan Ayun, niya. Ayun, maganda. Walang tax. Okay. Walang, walang capital gains tax. Okay. Walang, so, it's just an internal transfer. Okay. The problem right now is the developer, tinaas na nila yung transfers nila to the same amount of the capital gains tax. So, usually, uh, an internal transfer would cost about, or a transfer of rights would cost about 6% na din. Pero prior before, it was a flat 25,000 pesos to transfer. <laughs> Kasi internal siya, so wala ka pang taxes na binabayaran. So, even right now, the capital gains would be, uh, the 6% transfer of rights would just be an income of the developer. It, it, it's not gonna go to government taxes. Okay. Kasi hindi pa siya capital gains eh. So, that's the thing. So, timing component nga. Compared to, inantay ko siya. Though, I might um, probably, uh, pag turnover siya, it will probably be sold at a higher price. Pero, yun nga, you cannot be greedy in real estate. Tsaka, mas easier din siya. For that. Okay. Follow-up question to that. Uh, you said na meron naman pang long-term. How do you determine naman ano yung mga items na you, you will buy hold for a very very long term tapos saka mo bibenta. Tsaka yung follow up to that also, pinaparent mo ba siya while waiting for that period na hmm. na naghihintay na, ka? Ah, so, um, for properties naman na for long term siya, it means itong mga properties na to usually hindi sila nag pipik during pre-selling stage. So, ang popular properties dito is, let's say, for example, Shang Properties. Sila, sila popular dito. Na lahat ng properties nila, for the record, ever since they launched yung mga properties nila, usually, pag malapit na yung turnover, dyan nagpapanic buying yung mga tao. Plus, this market would usually want their property to be used already pag bumibili sila for that market. Um, other markets din naman, uh, for other developers din naman, uh, may mga middle class developers din na um, for long term hold din siya. Um, pwede ako, ang style ko, I usually put it sa market na either for rent or for sale, whatever comes first. Tapos kahit may renter na siya, naka for sale pa rin siya. Kasi it takes time to sell a property. It's not always, hindi ganun pabilis of Yeah, it's not always. That, once pa lang nangyari yun in my entire career sa real estate. Okay. So, yung one month. So, for those so, who want to know more about flipping naman, ano yung average flip, uh, in your experience, so average flip period mo? Uh, the 
ano, ano naman din yung pinaka worst mo na intention mo kailangan ma flip ko na to after experience pero it took a, a lo- it took it took this much time for me to flip everything also ah, okay so usually on an average kaya mo between 3 to 6 months eh. that's normal that's flipping eh. kasi above 6 months it's long term investing na nag-change the price sa set um usually for uh uh pinaka matagal naman mag-flip it can reach around uh, more than a year 18 months yan uh, usually may mga uh, deals na hindi natutuloy kasi wala nang earnest money sila or nag option money sila and then ipo-pull out nila so hanap ka na naman ng bagong buyer so um so when flipping a property lang kailangan lang talaga um it's the right property kasi ulitin ko not all properties are for flipping hindi talaga pwede lahat okay. hindi porket bumili ka property ay ito if flip flip ko to so there kailan mo yan if flip diba para kailan mo yan i sell kailan niyo exit plan mo is it within 1 year 3 years 5 years o pag turnover na talaga siya yun yan pero if you're buying naman ng RFO tapos gusto mo lang din siya if flip um there are certain things. May mga gumagawa kasi nito. Na, though ako hindi, hindi ko nire-risk. Pero may mga gumagawa na may buyers na sila. Pero bibilhin muna nila yung property. Okay. And then, um, itratransak muna nila yung property. Pero before even buying the property, meron na silang buyer sa mind nila. So, kaya mabilis yung flipping okay. ano nila. Ayusin lang nila ng konti. Pero, yeah. Pero pag ganun, uh, if they buy it, so the name, they would transfer it to themselves first then to the other person? Or hindi na, hindi na muna usually, nila hindi, usually, hindi na nila papadaan sa kanila pag umayag yung seller. Uh, so, that happens as well. Okay, uh, so, your, your, the context of flipping that you're sharing to people is dapat talaga pre-selling lagi, pre-selling, pre-selling. It's easier pre-selling. talaga. Okay. Kasi talagang okay. hindi ka makikita mm. ng tax. Mm. Uh, ng, ano mo, and, uh, it's, there, there's a bigger market eh, for that one. Uh, okay. Actually, tinanong nga ako na baka tao. So parang who buys those property na flip mo? Parang gano'n, oh, ba? Oh, parang oh, who, who buys them? Kasi bakit hindi na lang kami bumili diretso sa developer? Yun yung sinasabi ko. So sometimes, like for example, the one-month property I sold by flipping, mas mataas na yung price ng developer nun eh. Nasa 4 million plus na yung price ng developer nun eh. 3.3 gig, 3.2 pa lang sinel. Okay, so around that time lang. So per, um, there are people who would, and kung minsan sold out na rin sa developer, usually, you can, ano, mas better yon, mas madali. Ano. And there will always be someone who will buy your property for a certain reason. Maybe because yun lang makuha niyang facing ease, for example, okay. or with, uh, minsan feng shui naman yung reasoning niya, kaya gusto niya yung unit number mo. Okay, so, okay. So, th- so these things, so there will always be someone. Last, last question, uh, would it also work for secondary market na you flip something na binibenta ng meron na, may, meron na may-ari tapos tinirahan na siguro for 6 months or 1 year? Is it advisable na pwede pa rin ba siya ma-flip? Tapos ayusin mo na lang siguro or something? I, I pwede siya ma-flip pero it will take longer okay. and it's gonna be more expensive in terms of the paperwork, in terms of the kailangan mo ayusin yung unit in terms of the ano kasi uh, like usually like uh, people who invest in property continuously invest in property alam nila kung ano yung nasa market so usually they they know na pagka they know na pagkakabebenta lang nito property na to and then sinasell mo na naman to property so parang medyo turn off na siya so usually that only technique there is longer holding talaga siya so probably abuti ka more than a year bago mo ulit ma-sell yung property so always ang tip ko lang sa flip is always look for the good buy so never buy with the ano, market value price ng property wow uh-huh. so anyways you will be in Dubai this November yes, yes. November 29 oh. to 30 so, uh, so excited <laughs> so, so sa mga taga Dubai if you want to catch Richard uh, he's, he's gonna have a how many two days seminar two days seminar okay. four modules mm, can you talk more about it also ah uh, okay so Finally, uh, after that, and with the request that the mga kababayan sa Dubai, mm. finally I'm going there. So I'll be talking about four modules. Uh, I know you've attended a lot of real estate seminars already before, but I promise this is something different. Mm. Um, we'll talk about real estate as an asset. So how does a real estate work? What are the characteristics? What are the myths about real estate? Mm. So um, what are the disadvantage advantages of real estate? 
uh, what are the uh, classifications of real estate etc we talk about real estate investing so what are the techniques in investing property it's not just um, buying and forgetting <laughs> waiting for the price to grow so there's so much things subleasing subdividing rent to own what is rent to own yung iba nagbebenta ng rent to own pero after bank loan no rent to own does not work that way and you cannot buy rent to own from the developer so pag may nag pro promote ng rent to own from the developer that does not exist mm, yes wow. you cannot kasi after some time 24 months iba bank loan mo rent to own is earning real estate from the interest eh. di ba mm -hmm. okay. so we talk about um real estate uh real estate finance so of course it's a taxes how do you really earn what is the net operating income do you really earn from rentals or napuputa lang lahat sa maintenance sa expense your obligations and how 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 much money do you need how much leveraging do you need what are the risks in leveraging real estate or what is the role role of debt in real estate and lastly of course we talk about real estate analyzation so how do you determine the capital appreciation of a certain real estate etc so, so all of that will be in the link below so if you want to catch more of him and you want to learn more about real estate uh, Join him in his class in Dubai. So, yun lang, we feature different people with different mindsets, different techniques also on investing. It doesn't have to be the stock market all the time. It can be different assets. And when you can use your other cash to be diversified elsewhere. Kaya, siya, yes. guys, sobrang yaman. So, sobrang yaman. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, okay, yun. tawag dito, I treat real estate mm. like parang a stock market. Mm. Di ba? May timing component, mm. may technical analysis. Mm. So, yan yung mga matututunan nyo sa Dubai. So, <laughs> so so, so maging counterpart niya sa real estate. <laughs> no, no. no Lamang ka. Ano, sobrang yaman mo eh. So, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And bye -bye. God bless you.